Give me a minute. Looks like a it lot. It seems to me that what we are seeing is two open payload bay doors in the shiny surface. Oh, yeah, it would be the radiators. You know what I think? Yep, that's what we are seeing. Is that the earth going by underneath it? Yes, it is. It ought to be. Yep. Isn't that something? There they are. They're upside down by our gravity standards, and that's the earth from space, I believe. Uh-huh. Yeah, it does look like, in fact, you can see it passing beneath yeah. cloud yeah. formations yeah. and so on. Yeah. Those radiators are throwing off the heat, or they will if they have they been activated at this point. The freon is flowing through them already. Oh, that's uh, a good picture. Look at the that. next step is to elevate them some so that both sides can reject heat. John that's Young the is the tail there. of the orbit. Yeah. Right. It's a very good picture. You're looking right outside yeah. now, yeah. and it, that's looking at the aft bulkhead, right? Wait a minute, quiet. The tiles are missing. I see one the full square, and it uh, looks like a few little triangular shapes that are missing, and uh, we're uh, trying to put that on TV right now. Roger, Griff, we can see that good. Those are the heat-resistant tiles that um, are designed to withstand the heat of re-entry. Uh, and Columbia, Houston, uh, we have a state vector coming your way. Good sir. That is not a part of the spacecraft that is going to get the maximum heat. Losing a tile there would not be <coughs> as difficult as losing it in some other part. That's correct because it's on the upper surface of the spacecraft and not the one that will uh, see the, uh, the maximum heat. But they we'll, of course, uh, evaluate that in uh, detail. Roger. Can you, will you only know if tiles are missing by visual, uh, by looking at the, at the places where they may be missing, or do you have a computer read on that as well? The only direct way is visual, uh, both this good visual and, and the, the photographs taken during launch, of course. The only direct uh, way is the wrong way, if, if the heat starts to come through. Yeah, 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 well, through the mission, they will, they will be able to estimate from temperature readouts along the bottom surface of the orbiter, whether it's responding to sunlight correctly, and we'll get a clue as to whether it's properly protected. And on later missions, they'll be able to go outside and repair tiles, but they don't have that, that facility now. That's correct. Uh, from what we can see above wings, uh, tops, and uh, leaf edges, though, there's, uh, the hollows are fully intact. That's good. Okay, and the reds are coming out. So okay. the tops of right the here. wings are intact as far as the tiles are concerned. Right. More critical and more securely fastened. They're going to raise the radiators up now uh, to get that, better heat uh, rejection, and that will uh, uh, from, uh, secure uh, that uh, system uh, and make it go uh, for the missing tiles. Uh, also, a reported. And Columbia, we're 30 seconds uh, from LOS. We'll be at the uh, IO at the Indy at uh, 2 plus 12. Right, Dan, we'll see you there. And the radiator's up. There's the radiator out. Yeah, the radiator's up, and that big white box in the middle of the payload bay is our friendly DFI. That's throwing the, the heat from the Columbia out into outer space. Tiles on the wing appear, their wings appear to be intact. Yeah. That's, that's maybe the most important piece of news we've had this morning. Roy Neal is standing by in Houston. Roy? You, that last tape that you had on the air, as a matter of fact, showed the screen going blank in mission control. We have mission control right here with us. This is Charles Lewis. We call him Chuck. He's the flight director who will be up next replacing Neil Hutchinson, who's taken him through the launch. But Chuck, you've been here all along. How did you feel when that thing took off this morning? Well, I was home watching my TV. Uh, uh, I guess there were so many mixed emotions. I had difficulty seeing the screen at times. Uh, joy, relief, uh, uh, pride. Uh, just a number of mixed emotions. I was really uh, choked up by the times. Were you still choked up just now when you were watching the screen and we were seeing the spacecraft through television eyes and you started seeing a few things like a couple missing tiles back there on those maneuvering system pods? Well, not choked up. It's still an emotional experience to see this for the first time. Uh, we'll have to have a look at the tile areas and see what's behind those particular tiles. Uh, and I'm sure they're doing that already in mission control. We've got drawings and so forth that indicate what's directly below those, uh, what temperatures that area will see during entry and so forth. That'll be evaluated, and I'm sure it's already started. I guess the thrust of my question, Chuck, because to us laymen, we're always concerned when perhaps we shouldn't be. Should we be concerned with the fact that some tiles are not there anymore? I don't 
think so, not at this time, uh, until we've had a chance to evaluate, uh, like I said, exactly what's beneath those tile areas. Uh, I don't think we should be concerned at this time. As a flight director just now, as you were looking at the payload bay pictures, what did you see that perhaps should be called to our attention? I guess I saw the, the radiators deployed. Uh, that's, uh, uh, that's what provides our cooling on orbit. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the tile. Uh, everything else looked clean. I guess it was just uh, the radiators primarily. We did get them deployed, and uh, we've got uh, active cooling on, on board the vehicle now. All mm -hmm. right, and also those latches were latching and unlatching correctly right down the center line. I heard that, or part of it, before I came over here, and it sounds like everything in the, uh, and there's several latch groups that have to work properly, uh, bulkheads and center lines, and it sounds like all of that went very well. One of the things, incidentally, that I noticed is that remotely controlled television cameras on board were enabling us here on Earth to follow what goes on. That's important later on, is it not, as that payload bay or cargo hold really gets used? Yes, uh, normally the initial requirements for TV for the uh, vehicle, and even in the past programs, have been primarily a public relations uh, device. But it turns out, for example, uh, we saw the tiles. It turns out that many times they're a good engineering tool, an aid in uh, visually uh, seeing uh, a problem area. And from this station right now, Crippen and Young standing there, as yet haven't had to push that little red button in their hand controller. No, I don't. computers haven't been used. That's correct. Everything seems to be working just like it was advertised to work. What about time. that data flight indicator, the recorder that they have? The VFI recorder, I, I, I haven't been in the computer. Another hour and a half. And so, Tom, let's get back to you. All right, Roy, we're going to talk some more about the tiles. What we were looking at, the Columbia was in this kind of a configuration, and the camera was pointing back up here, and you were seeing some missing tiles back on this area. <laughs> Back here, if we can show you, these are the orbital maneuvering engines and their fuel systems called the Ohm's pods. The missing tiles were right on the top surfaces of those pods. Right, Joe. Now, it's going to be critical. There are 31,000 of tiles, these tiles, <coughs> uh, spun silicate from pure Minnesota sand, we're told. They can withstand temperatures up to 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. They'll hit very high temperatures on re-entry. They had some trouble as you were getting the space shuttle Columbia ready with them falling off before. This is the critical surface, though, the nose right. and along here, because it comes back in like this at one point, and all the it's heat. all the heat here and on the leading edges of the wings and the leading edge of the tail, which is also clean. How will they know if they've lost any tiles here because they don't have a camera on that area? Well, if, if they had lost any during the early launch phase, they might very well have some, uh, some photography of it from these orbiting aircraft, okay? Uh, other than that, indirectly through temperature measurements here, if they found a spot where the temperature went up more rapidly than the surrounding area, they might suspect a faulty tile. Can I just see that uh, for a second? That, that just to point out to those of you watching at home what they've done with this machine, if you can get a close-up. They have different materials. Right at the tip of the nose, they have something called carbon-carbon, which uh, will withstand heat up to 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's carbon-carbon there and carbon-carbon along the leading edges of the wings, and this is where the maximum temperature is when it comes in. Then along in here, they have high-temperature tiles that can take, uh, that, that can withstand heat up to 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's an incredible amount of heat there. And then they have low-temperature tiles along the side, which can go up to 1,200 feet. And the rest is covered with, a, with something called Nomax, which anybody who's ever driven a racing car will know about. That's a heat-resistant material that's sometimes worn by racing drivers. But they have adapted it for the use of this. So it's got different kinds of heat-resistant tiles all over it of different ability to withstand. And that carbon-carbon stuff must be just incredible. And it's very, very tough. And we use it throughout the vehicle except for its weight. How, how, uh, how many tiles can you lose off the bottom and not be critical? Uh, it depends how many of them you lose in a in a in a given bunch. area. Yeah, in a in a given area. Now, uh, are they lost during launch, or can they? I'm going to ask a deliberately dumb question, Joe. Can okay. they fall off when they're uh, up in space in the vacuum of space? I don't see any possibility of their falling off uh, uh, in the vacuum of space because there are no forces on them uh, during launch when the vehicle may be. Uh, bending a little bit due to the stresses of the engines and so on, uh, uh, that's when the uh, problem is more likely to occur. Thank you very much. Joe Kerwin will be back with continuing coverage 
of the launch of the Columbia Shuttle Orbiter right after this.